In the first post-World War II setting release for their highly successful bolt-action rule system, Warlord Games have released Bolt Action Korea. This new supplement is pretty much a whole new approach to the rules. Although set only five years since the end of a worldwide conflict, the new book focuses upon how things have changed and what it is like when the world goes to war in a fractured nation. This sock of a book contains 240 packed pages covering the whole war from 1950 up until 1953 and charting the changes that took place. The book begins with a brief but informative introduction which covers both the build-up to the war and the plight of Korea in the run-up to 1950. As noted within this section, a key part of this supplement is the introduction of new specific rules to cover this period of combat, as well as new force organisations and weaponry of the post-World War II period. Each phase of the Korean War is covered over the course of a series of history scenario style pieces. These contain maps, images and setup, victory conditions and objectives which bring the events chronicled to tabletop life. It is this element that aids the gamer in their understanding of the war, an oft forgotten war full of both typical and atypical actions, using old and new technology and tactics. The book moves forward to explore the main participants in the war, beginning with the North Korean People's Army. This army list is largely set out in typical bolt action style, but presents some unique special rules for the post war men and equipment of this army. This army is a blend of the old and the new, the Chinese copies of Soviet weaponry, alongside the use of wave attacks and flags. This particular army has some elements which are similar to a Soviet World War II force, but also has some aspects of its own, such as guerrilla fighters. The army list covers the whole of the war period, with the choice of troop types and abilities reflecting this. The second army list is also new, dealing with the South Korean Republic of Korea Army. Again, although based upon the US and other Western forces, this is an army which begins the war having been trained largely for defensive work, which then goes on to develop into a suitable force who can take the fight to the enemy, albeit with the United Nations military support. The United States and United Nations forces list gives players army lists for the US Army, US Marines and British and Commonwealth troops. Again, there are elements of World War II doctrine, but the major contribution is the fact that each of the army lists deals with troops from the early, middle and late war periods, plus new weapons such as recoilless rifles, improved tanks, jet aircraft in the ground support role and the use of helicopters for all but offensive operations. The final army list outlines another new force, the Chinese People's Volunteer Army. Without the intervention of the Chinese, the Korean War would arguably have been over fairly quickly. However, the tide of volunteers were able to stem the advance of UN and Republic of Korea forces just when victory was in their grasp. The Chinese were an implacable foe who used tanks and bugles, human wave attacks and modern firepower. The army list is the special rules and specialist units that characterise this experienced and hard-fighting army. Of course, as this is a bolt-action book, there is a period-specific army selection section, which outlines the choices which can be made from 1950 up until 1953, and covers particular major events. The section also includes information relating to the different national forces which serve with the UN, from the Belgians to Colombia, Ethiopia, Greece, Turkey and many more. In one sense, these could be considered minor forces, but they serve with distinction far from home. Lastly, the major powers are their own period selectors, again covering the events and years of the war. The notable combatants section appears to be the book's equivalent to the legends found in the World War II versions. Rules and points costs are included here for a number of individuals that may be deployed. The very last section covers the various gen generic special rules that add that extra layer of accuracy to gaming the Korean War. New aircraft rules, rules of suitable weather conditions, river crossings, etc. are all here. This is a useful book, which may be seen as hopefully the first of many forays into the post-World War II period. A great deal of effort has been made to not only inform but commemorate those who fought in the Korean War. The level of information is of a high standard, and the new army lists and rules this period really work both as information for this particular war, 
and also could be used for some interesting encounters in a what-if fashion. A straightforward but serviceable approach to a complex topic which reads well and is very gamer friendly. This video has been produced by WI Prime. WI Prime is Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. As a WI Prime member, you get access to all Wargames Illustrated videos before anyone else. We'll keep you posted on what's new via the Primetime News Bulletin delivered to your inbox every Friday. If you are not a WI Prime member, you're missing out on loads of benefits, including access to the Wargames Illustrated Vault, freebies, discount vouchers, PDFs of the latest magazine, and more. Find out more about WI Prime by following the link.